Hi, this is Dan here. I hope you're doing well today. Now, I'm making this video because of a few problems that I know bass players have, like this. I've reached a point where I don't know what to study. All the different YouTube videos are starting to be less informative, and I'm stalling my progress. Another comment I got. It's so hard to learn bass. There are too many things to learn. Now, the problem here is twofold. It's information overload in this internet age and YouTube channels like mine bombarding you with videos. It's that, but it's also a lack of clear focus and direction and no planning. So in this video, if any of those things are a problem for you, I'm going to solve them hopefully and show you loads of things that you need to know to learn bass really well. So I'm going to split this lesson up into three parts. And if you look below the video, you can look at the different chapters to go straight to a bit that interests you. But part one, we're going to look at goals. Part two, foundations. This is the section that we're going to look at what actually do we need to learn. And then part three, practice. How to develop a practice routine that you're actually going to stick to. Before we move into the goals section, let me know in the comments below, what are you struggling most with, with your improvement on bass? And you know, if you do have any things that have really, really helped you, share them. So the first thing I mentioned was goals and being unclear and not really having an idea about what you want from bass. So you need to ask yourself a few questions in order to be able to, to really get the answer of what you want from learning the bass. So questions like, you know, what players do you want to play and sound a little bit like? What styles of music do you love? Do you want to learn bass as a casual hobby or do you want to join a band or play for friends? And if you close your eyes and picture yourself playing bass, what do you sound like and what are you playing? Now, questions like this will actually start to lead you towards solid actions that you can take to learning the bass. It will put you on the right path and give you a lot more direction. Let me give you some real world playing examples. Now, don't worry if you don't understand a few of the terms I'm about to, to use, but let's just say you love modal jazz. You really, really like Miles Davis and you don't really know where to start. Well, going down that rabbit hole a bit, you know, you get towards a Dorian mode. So, So What by Miles Davis, one of his most famous songs with one of the most famous bass lines. comes from this Dorian mode and if you want to you know go down the jazz route you would need to learn something like that and walking bass like this Okay, so if that's the kind of style of music you like, then you're, you're starting to, to understand the elements that you might need to learn that. Another example could be that you love funk music. Now let's take that same collection of notes, okay, the Dorian mode. This is a D Dorian. Don't worry about the intricacies of it. But let's just say you like funk. Now we're starting to get into the realms of syncopated rhythms, 16th notes, which is like one E and a two E and a, when you've got four 16th notes in one beat, you know, that's your tempo. Rhythm is an area you're really going to want to focus on and also technique, but we'll get onto that in part two. Perhaps you really love rock bass playing. Well, that might lead you towards pick playing, you know, a plectrum, eighth notes and learning some simple rock bass riffs like just love jazz, maybe you don't want to go down that route, okay? You need to work out what it is you want. I always wanted to be a session player, and for me that meant listening to everything, being able to play with a pick, being able, being able to play a little bit of slap, understand a bit of jazz, that was my thing. And that was, you know, what I wanted to go towards from a very early age, you know? So the path was quite clear for me, and you need to understand where you're going. So ask yourself a few of these questions and others you can think of to really define what it is that you want from the bass. I release a video every single day now if you include YouTube Shorts and there are other amazing bass channels and there's a lot of noise that comes into your direction and you can actually afford to filter out so many things if you decide, okay, I want to learn X, Y and Z. Well, just do that instead of 
everything else that there is to learn. Let's move on to the foundations, the elements of bass playing that you actually need to learn in order to get good. And it really doesn't matter what style of music you're playing. These are pretty, pretty much universal. Now I'm not going to go into exact specifics on everything. I'll put a link below this video to a blog post, first things to learn on bass guitar. It's pretty basic actually. And it's just got really a handful of things in different areas like technique, theory, fretboard knowledge, groove, etc. And you can just go there and get a bunch of free lessons to learn. But just listen to this. I'm just going to improvise a bass line and break it down for you. Okay, so I was just making that up, but there are a few elements that went into me being able to play that. I'm going to talk about the first one, which is technique. Now, this is something you absolutely must be focusing on in every practice session. If your fingers aren't coordinated or moving fast enough, then you won't be able to do anything. So I was doing some hand shifts. That's a big part of bass playing. There was a ghost note in there. That's a ghost note. There was also a hammer on. Now, if you're very, very new to bass, then those techniques might be beyond where you need to be at the beginning. You know, just get finger style if that's what you're doing, if it's plectrum, you know, get your plectrum together. But just, just go up and down, getting the hands coordinated. Then you can add in articulations like hammer ons and pull offs and things like that. Now, once you get those down, you'll hear them all the time, especially in funk, especially in rock. and and you know some of the more uh, intricate jazz styles you might hear, soloing styles, you're going to hear all this type of playing. Now I know when I'm improvising that I'm playing a bass line that's in a key. Okay, this is where we get into the music theory, that's a key, a natural minor, and I'm moving towards different root notes that have arpeggios or chords under them. There's a G, and I know this shape works over that. A shape is to do with how well you know the fretboard. That's fretboard knowledge. Here's an F chord, and that's F major. Okay, and I'm able to navigate through these changes because I understand the harmony. Again, I've got a lesson on this, so I'm going to link that below. So we've got technique. We've got theory. We've got a, uh, an ability to move to different parts of this fretboard because the fretboard knowledge is there. So these are all things you want to concentrate on. That's about the speed. I've got a very solid understanding of the beats here. So groove, timing, rhythm. That's a big study in bass. Three, four. That is always going on in my head. One, my foot's tapping. Three, four, one to probably one of the big areas of bass, groove, feel, timing. If you can play something very simply with really excellent tone, but in time, that really is the function of most bass playing. When you play lots of songs and you work out lots of bass lines, you can steal ideas, okay? So studying the great, studying the great bass players is such a good way to enhance your own bass playing. A quick word on reading music. A lot of people get in touch with me and I think they think they have to learn to read music. But unless you want to be a session bass player, unless you want to do it for fun and enjoyment and it is fun and enjoyable, Unless you're playing in a rehearsal band or at church or you need reading, you don't necessarily need it. I love reading music. I can read music. I can't imagine it out of my life. But Pino Palladino, my favourite bass player, one of them of all time, he doesn't read music and yet he's one of the best bass players of all time. So you don't need reading, but it is a great thing to do. Another thing to mention, Sunshine of Your Love, I played that earlier. That is... That's just a blues scale, it's a minor blues scale. So what you do is you learn that scale, you learn the riff, and then you connect the two things. And that's the thing, it's connections between all these different elements I'm talking about. Far from being overwhelming, when you learn some of these basics, actually they coalesce into sort of one thing. They all link up and you, you realize, you make a connection. The light bulb goes off in your head and you get that moment of going, oh, that's a blues scale, there it is. You practice your technique enough 
such that you can play that without any worries. Your timing, you've practiced that enough so that you're doing, going like that and da, 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 those are eighth notes, okay? So quarter notes, eighth notes, 16th notes, whole notes. You just learn basic rhythms and that's really what this lesson is about, this part, foundations, it's the basics. Just learn those. Now, allow me a quick plug here. I've got a course called From Beginner to Bassist and the tagline is, learn the elements of great bass playing and it really does go into the seven areas I believe will make you an excellent bass player. Loads of lessons in there, probably two years worth if you're a real beginner. But if you're an intermediate who doesn't really understand theory or improvising or if you're a player that's come back from bass after years, this will really help you. So if you're interested in investing a little bit, it's not that much, it's a one-off fee and you can check that out down below. Okay, back to the lesson. So once you've got a few of these basics down and you're starting to get a bit more confident, I believe the best way to learn bass in terms of really learning bass, but also sustaining enjoyment, because this has to be enjoyable, is to learn songs. You probably have an idea in your head of a song that you want to play or a bass player that you want to sound like. So I would recommend that you, you follow your instincts in that way. I've got a playlist that I'll link to right here that's got a load of bass guitar songs to learn. Some are hard, but some are easy. Pick the easy ones and the ones you like because you don't want to overwhelm yourself, but you also don't want to, to run before you can walk, okay? So you'll know, but if you, you'll, you'll be able to sense which ones are easier than others. They're all in that playlist. And that really is the, the habit I'd like you to get into. Learn as many songs you can, preferably in different styles. I think one of the biggest areas to focus on is technique. If you can hold the bass properly, if you can get a decent sound out of it with no pain, that will really give you some confidence. But the, the other big, big, big area of bass playing that will benefit everyone is a practice routine and, and just developing that and being consistent. And consistency is down to your lifestyle and how much time you have. You know, everyone is different and you're going to have to find what you can do. But there's there is a lot to learn, even if I give you that blog post and, and there's not much on it, you still have to practice it. You still have to do it every day. So that's what this section is about. After watching parts one and two, you should be a little bit clearer about what you want to play and what you need to learn. Now, I'd recommend that you use a journal like this one or a blank notebook or Evernote, which is a digital application, something just to plan and organize. You know, you can write down your goals and then you can track your, your progress. Write down things that went well in your practice session and little specific things that you need to work on. So I mentioned a Dorian mode. What you would do is you would learn a major scale, so for example, G major. You know, learn to play it up and down smoothly. Then you figure out, or I teach you, that a Dorian mode is where you play those same notes, but you start on the second degree of the scale, in this case, A. you get this Dorian mode, okay? Let's just say that whole thing really interests you, but you don't understand it. That goes in your journal, okay? You might write a goal if that's your kind of thing, okay? I wanna be able to understand and be able to play a Dorian mode by one month from today. You know, a journal, a notebook, this kind of planning and organization is a great way to keep you on track and keep you accountable. A Dorian mode, by the way, is brilliant for... You know, for funk and also for jazz. I always talk about Dorian mode, I always fall back on that, but you know, there's so many other things to learn. That's certainly a common scale to learn on bass. I'll put a practice video right here that you can watch, but the basic idea is just to be very clear about what it is you're practicing now and in the next sort of few practice sessions. If you have a course like my one or any other course that you're taking, or a teacher, a local teacher, or you know, someone, that's teaching you online, they can give you the actual specifics of what you're going to learn. But you have free videos like this on YouTube, and I guess a lot of this video is about how you might organize all this stuff that's coming towards you. And I think just, you know, having a plan, having a, a system and, or a journal, or a blank piece of paper, or whatever, just to, to force you to go in the right direction, down the right path. I think that's a good thing. It's all about building up small wins and just marginally gaining a few little percent every week. And if you continue to do that, that will compound into real, real improvement in your bass playing. So I hope that's given you a little bit more clarity about what it takes to learn the bass and start on that path towards mastery. You can look at my channel. I've got loads and loads of free lessons. I'll put a link below to that From Beginner to Bassist course if that interests you. 
also a link to that free blog post where you can, there are loads of lessons in that that will just get you started. But just, you know, practice one thing at a time. Don't think that you have to learn all this stuff all at one time. Go at your own pace, but do commit, you know, commit to this. Borrow five to 10 minutes of, of your TV watching time or whatever. You do have at least that time that you can do. Make it consistent, practice every day. Have a little practice zone that you go to that you can get your base quickly and get into practice. And I promise you that if you manage to get a few of these things together, that after a couple of weeks of doing this, you will see real progress. Never compare yourself to anyone else. You are trying to get a bit better than you are today. That's all you need to do. Okay, so if you've got any questions, do let me know. Otherwise, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.